It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. I have a sneaky suspicion that this is going to be a pretty short engagement for this episode. Someone sent in an article to me that talks about agile misrepresentations led me to the love of words. Now, one of the things that I preach in every one of my classes that I teach, especially my advanced classes, and in every coaching engagement is don't get hung up on words. If you let words control your every movement, you're going to be in trouble because sometimes words mean exactly what you expect them to say, I mean, and um, say or mean, and other times they don't. This is the whole logic when we talk about people who get into fights over text messages. Sometimes you can't elicit emotions using words like you could any other way. So I often find myself saying, don't get hung up on words, have a simple conversation. But let's see where this author took this article because I think I'm gonna just sit here and go, oh my goodness, here we go. Once upon a time, there was a version of me proud to be called a scrum master. With its incredible approach, the Agile Manifesto and a Scrum Guide had the scent of math, and I love math. At the time, I believed Agile was my professional future. After years in a fast-paced and messed-up software industry, precise ideas brought order out of the blue. That was stunning. Then reality came into play. The Manifesto and its dark side. Oh my goodness, I can't believe they went here. I still hear people explaining we'll never waste more time writing analysis and documentation. They had just read the Agile Manifesto's second value, working software over comprehensive documentation. This is an interesting case of superficial reading of words in which people read to confirm a desire much more than what to learn what the writers meant. The dark Agile Manifesto, well, shows how a few word changes led to misinterpretations or leads to misinterpretations. We are uncovering the only way of developing software by doing it and helping teaching others to do it through this work we've come to value. Individuals and interactions and not processes and tools, working software and not comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration and not contract negotiation. Responding to change and not following a plan. That is, there is no value in the items on the right while we value only the items on the left. If you look at the replace words, it's about making common sense observation. Uh, It it becomes dogma and feeling authorized to shift from relative to absolute statements. If you say the second value, for example, the shift between the two sentences is a paradigm of misinterpretation, working software over comprehensive documentation, working software and not comprehensive documentation. The mindset in action is that what less important, what's less important is useless and harmful. It implies that value is only in working software and assumes that users need no documentation to use the software, which is an ideal situation. However, as a technical writer, I'm convinced that any documentation page's failure in designing software as users expect and think it to act. As a software engineer, I know that developing software compromises perfection and available resources, so software is never built to be perfect. In an ideal world, documentation is something to avoid and comprehensive documentation is even more useless But in a real world, users cannot get value from software without guidance from documentation. Okay, this is just spinning in circles. You need documentation to use something. You need something to work properly, so you need less documentation. This has been the chicken and the egg battle, and and it's it's amazing to me. You know, I'm not even going to go through the other points, because he goes through each and every one of the points. I'm just going to close with this. (laughs) Yes, I said close. I'm going to close with this thought. If we nitpick every single word of the manifesto and the intent of the authors versus how it's written versus how it's going to be acutely accepted from a psychokinetic or psychological expectation, we are going to chase our tails and we are going to wind up not getting anywhere. We're, We're going to wind up worse off than we were when we started. My point here is, while I really appreciate people using the right word for the right time, ask me about the difference between continuous and continual, (laughs) right? Um, There are times, and there's a time and a place where words really matter. In this case, when people get to the heart of being so nitpicky, it drives wedges in between what the agile spirit is and what we're trying to do. 
So I guess if you want me to boil this down for you, here's my takeaway. My take on this is the Agile Manifesto was created by a bunch of people who are highly intelligent, who sat down together and did study every word until they knew that those words were the words that they intended to choose. However, it does not mean that they were perfect. And it doesn't mean that every word selected there wasn't left open to interpretation. But at that same time, if we spend all of our time trying to dissect and interpret all the different words, we are going to miss out on the spirit of what was actually meant. So for me, a common sense approach, a more pragmatic instead of dogmatic approach to this makes a lot more sense. Instead of spinning our wheels and talking about what we can do to get all this figured out and how we can be more effective and what the intent was from all the different roles and from all the different perspectives, that could take days, weeks, months to figure out. And then even once we're done, it would be time to evaluate it again because needs change, especially when you move from different types of projects to different type of projects. I think that if we use the manifesto as a framework to guide us towards healthy team working agreements, towards creating environments of psychological safety, towards helping us have radical candor communication, and towards helping us identify and understand targeted personas and the products and services that will help them the most, then I think we're doing things right. But there's no way for us to, we, we have to remember that agile is a mindset. We have to think agile before we can be agile and before we can do agile. Agile is one third execution, one third thought process, and one third preparation. And I think people forget about that preparation part because it is a mindset and you need to be mentally acute and aware of what you're doing and the decisions you're making and how it's going to impact your targeted consumer. That's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have an episode or an article or anything you'd like for us to do, feel free to reach out. Learn more at AgileDad.com. We'd love to hear from you. As always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care. Mm-hmm.